Good morning, welcome to the seventh Enduro World Series course preview of 2018. That is the beautiful old town of Ainsa up there. That is the hill we're about to go up. And these are the vans we're going to go there in. So we're here at the start of stage one, and this is the highest point of the race, am I right in saying that? Yeah, highest point of the race. So the riders are going to get shuttled to that little village down below, and then they're going to ride from there up oh, yeah. to here. And stage one is the longest of the race, and it goes all the way back down to that village where they feed again. They're then going to climb halfway back up again, and the rest of the day actually takes them around the side of this huge rocky bluff above us and does stage two, three, and four into the badlands right back to the town. And then day two happens around the corner in the mountains we can see over there. It's France just over there. That's the That's, that's the Pyrenees, is it? Yeah. It's about... Why would you throw horse Why would you start things by throwing horse at right. me? Start stage one. Start stage one. And it starts and it's pretty tech, but what's great here is none of the trail is actually built mountain bike trail. It's all recovered ancient hiking access market. Some of it dating back 900 years. The name of this stage means the wonder of the bicycle. Which if anybody sees me riding it, will probably be refought quite quickly. It's gonna get hot this week, George. Forecast be really hot on Sunday. Oh nice catch. There's a little chicane here. Try and slow the riders down a little bit. Is that fairly representative of the riding around here then, Chris? That sort of loose, rocky but quite flowy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you'll find it's a real mixture. There's a lot of loose rock. It's worth pointing out, last night we got the mother of all thunder and lightning storms came through. Great year-round venue. December's apparently a brilliant month here. A little bit cooler. <sighs> a little punchy climb here. We're diving right off that traverse trail now, Rick. And it's going to get a little bit narrower and a little bit twistier. Oh, it's like being in Star Wars. Look at that ribbon of dirt up ahead. And as I said, this is the kind of middle two kilometers of this stage. It's loose through here. Whoa. This little bit and the fire road up there are the, the only two climbs on this stage. So stage one's going to come around here and dive right. You can see the taping through these trees. Oh yeah. This whole pitch through this pine. Super fast loam. And then they're going to continue out pretty much to the level of the river. We're actually now just going to liaise to stage two. Now let's get our traverse on. Let's get the way! It's quite rubbly, I would imagine quite a bit of this loose rock will clear out after practice. I still have no idea how they remember where they're going. I guess a lot of them don't. Oh! This stage set by its creator to really encapsulate rock flow. If that's not an oxymoron. The real law of averages here. And with the angle to where they are, I would imagine we'll see less mechanicals. The riders just aren't impacting stuff so hard. This is hard work. A lot of vibration coming back from this stuff. All those sort of small, medium sized hits. Stage two finish. So, this is Toraletha. Toraletha. Which, after stage two, which finishes just here, is going to be the feed zone. Beautiful panorama here, Rick. Let's have a look. You can actually see where, the, where that tree line meets the cliff band on, the, on our left. That's where we came in on that high traverse. Is there much pressure out of it? No. Oh. <laughs> the name of this trail in English translates to the Coffin Trail. This is how they used to move the dead up to the church. The Coffin Trail? Yes, yeah, so it's actually built originally to move coffins. It was still a bit greasy in here, but I rode this yesterday. It was incredible, dry. Oh, mud. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Rick just got the puddle too. <laughs> Topless man there. Not distracting at all. <sighs> I'm just getting these corners wrong, just breaking too late. And it looks like you've loads of room in them on the way in, but you don't really. About halfway down here. Nice wide setup, drop in. Wide again, drop in. Oh, and hell. <laughs> hey. Hey, guys. Why is it called the Badlands? 
I take it loads of good stuff's happened. Bad though. to the bone. Michael Jackson bad or bad oh. bad? Short stage of the weekend I believe. Take the prologue out of it. Oh. That's a spicy chorifo down there. Look at this ridge and the terrain. It's really firm under the tyres. There's an incredible amount of grip actually. Get that. And again. Oh! <laughs> Gotta be precise, still down here. Gotta learn those as well because could drop a couple of them, maybe make some time. So much fun, you can easily get carried away and this marks the finish line of the stage four end of day one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry man. <laughs> Seth's seen some pretty big events over the years this place. <laughs> Fairly savage affairs. Hopefully less violence in the Yeah, place. less siege machinery. So this is us on the way to the top of stage five now. This one's good. So it kind of, well it's a new addition. It's a pretty new trail. It drops us straight down this kind of face to a town called Boltania. Again, no brakes, just trying to eke out all I can from lines. A little bit wider on the exit, a little bit wider on the entry. It makes such a difference not needing to touch the brakes. Just keeping its momentum with very little energy being expelled really. And because it's quite low angle, unlike a lot of the stuff this year, no real arm pump. Day two is a bit shorter for the riders. 27k or so. This is a super fast traverse Chris was talking about. Again, there is flow. I'll go wide and I'll set up high. That'll get him free. Get back to the wide. There's subtle little line choices that make all the difference to avoid you doing that. <laughs> Avenge dead meat! Oh, you're doing an incredible job of picking all the really bad lines in combination. It's fantastic. I feel the people at home need to see all the really bad lines. Did brilliant. Now just for this kind of steep techie bit. Let's go. <laughs> no. Come on, Rick. And my hands are just in absolute pieces now. And this is not a long stage, I'm just over 2k's in length. Alright, I'm sure I should probably tell Rick not to. Not to oh, look. you trialsy dick! Don't, don't look left! <laughs> oh. <laughs> that wasn't intentional, but it worked. <laughs> stage 5. Here we are, the ancient village square of Boltania. Feed zone's gonna be after stage 5. As we're going over to 7, we're gonna miss 6. This is the final climb. Very quiet now. Stage seven, so the riders are gonna start just up there. Yep. Seeing as we had a long day, we'll just dive in here. I think that's only fair. I forgot to tell Rick there's some massive drops on this stage. I'm sure he'll work it out. There's one. <laughs> now this is a physical stage to finish the day on. Up you go, pal. <laughs> ah, he's got this. A par of grey skull. Pretty special, that view. A lot going on on this trail, though. And it's kind of reopened for the race. I'm going to smash the rig. We're going to buy two pints of beer. I'm going to put the first one over my head and the second one inside me. This stage has got a neutral zone on it. The climb's just too much for the stage, so we take it out the timing but give them a fixed time to get up it. Uh, oh. Oh. So this is the beginning of the neutral section. We'll give them a kind of tight enough time window that they can't hang around. They'll have to move, you know? Whoa! <sighs> yeah, looser than anticipated this stuff. Oh, this one's tight. Woo! And this one. And again. Oh, no. Oh. Send it! Ah! Oh! Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> you could have had that. Oh, that's the finish. <laughs> Stage seven. Done. Back in Einza. That is a tough, tough race. It's going to suit those riders, ultra fit, who are really good at carrying speed. 